Hi everyone, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use Adobe Dynamic Link to send a sequence from Adobe Premiere to After Effects. And there's a number of reasons why this would be helpful to you when you're editing and finalizing an edit. But the reason that I'm gonna be showing this to you today is because I've received a number of questions about how someone would send a sequence to After Effects to perform their final color correction there. Now, obviously there's a number of color correction tools available to you, but if you are looking to do your final effects mastering in After Effects, I think that this is a very powerful tool and a great way to send a sequence from Premiere to After Effects to make any changes and adjustments that you might need to to a final sequence that you've cut in Premiere. So I'm in Adobe Premiere right now, and I'm actually using Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud, but this will work just as well in Adobe Premiere CS6. So the first thing I wanna do, if you look at my screen here, I have my final edited sequence. And in order to send this over to After Effects, what I wanna do first is duplicate the sequence. And the reason I wanna duplicate the sequence is because when I use Dynamic Link, it's essentially going to replace my edit decisions with an After Effects file. And that means I'm going to lose all of my different edits that I've made here. So if at some point I need to go back and change the edit, um, I won't be able to do that unless I sort of preserve my final edit decisions and my final sequence. So the sequence that I'm gonna create, I'm just gonna use to sort of develop this link between Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. So I'm just gonna right click and duplicate my sequence and I'm just gonna call it Glamour Final CC for color correction. And I'm going to open that. And just so I don't get confused, I'm going to close my other sequence here. And once I've done that, creating the link is as simple as selecting the clips that I want to put into my After Effects files. So essentially, I just clicked and dragged to select all the clips that I want to include in the link. And then I'm going to go up to File and select Adobe Dynamic Link. And what this is gonna do is sort of bundle all of the clips together that I've selected into one After Effects composition. So I'm gonna select that, and then I'm going to go into After Effects. And I already had After Effects open, so I had to click on the icon for it, but if you do not have After Effects open, most likely After Effects will launch, and then you'll just sort of get this Save As pop-up automatically. And what we're saving here is the project file that will be placed on the timeline uh, in place of those clips that I had selected. So I'm gonna give this project file a name. I'm gonna call it final CC for color correction. I'm just gonna hit save. And now what's gonna happen is that project is gonna open up in After Effects with all of my edit decisions down here. And you can see that each track is a different clip and a different edit decision. And if I sort of deselect these, um, I can go through and I have each individual clip on a track. And what this will allow me to do is any effects work or compositing that I need to do in After Effects, I can now do on a clip by clip basis. If we look back in Premiere to see what happened, we can see that where there used to be those multiple clips, I now just have a single imported After Effects project file on my timeline. So all of those clips have been merged together in a way um, into an After Effects project. And so anything that I change here in After Effects will dynamically update here in Premiere. And so let's take a look and see how that works. So since the question I received about how to do this was related to color correction, I'm just gonna give a quick demonstration of how this might work with color correction. So if I do end up doing any color correction in Adobe After Effects, there's obviously a lot of tools that you have at your disposal, but a lot of times I like using the Color Finesse plugin from Synthetic Aperture. And the first time you launch it, you may have to register it, but it does come with Adobe After Effects. So it is part of the package that you have purchased. And once you just sort of drag and drop that onto your clip, you wanna go into the full interface for Color Finesse and Color Finesse will launch. And going through this interface, of course, would be a, a whole nother tutorial on its own, but a couple tips about using Color Finesse. One thing over here, this RGB 8-bit, I would change that to RGB floating point, and that will make your color correction a little bit smoother. And basically the interface just works by turning on checkboxes, and by turning on a checkbox that will enable or disable settings. So 
your basic uh, controls are turned on with these checkboxes. And if you want to make any adjustments to the master highlights, midtone shadows, that's all done through this sort of tab interface. And so all I'm going to do to make this uh, very apparent that we're making a change here is take out uh, the saturation. And I'm just going to say, OK. And you'll see that now that effect has been applied to my clip. Um, and it's quite a bit different. It's a dramatic difference there. And now, in order to link this back to my Premiere project file, all I need to do is actually just save this After Effects file. So as soon as I save this, if I go back into Premiere Pro and sort of go to the position on the timeline where I have that clip, you'll see it's automatically and dynamically updated to include the adjustment that I've made. And so all I need to do now is go through in After Effects and adjust each of my clips, and then it will link back to my project file, and that's how I can do my final color correction or any other compositing work that I might need to do in this project file. And so that's really the essence of how Adobe Dynamic Link works and how you can use it to send a sequence from Premiere Pro to After Effects. And I think the most important thing to remember is just really to try to duplicate your sequence so that you can preserve those initial edits. That way, if you do find that you need to make a lot of changes to your sequence, you don't have to do those edits within After Effects. Because once you've made this link, you don't really have the ability to easily go back to your clips. So having and preserving an edit is a really good idea if you are going to use dynamic link. But once you've sort of gotten into After Effects, this is a very easy and quick way to bring the media back and forth across the two programs. So hopefully this has been helpful for you. And thank you so much for watching.